Hello and a big welcome back to all my subscribers and if you're not a subscriber, what's wrong with you? Uh, today I want to go into Risk Five, uh, talk about the background of Risk Five, how it was started, how it was developed, uh, about the community and all of that sort of good stuff. Uh, the reason for this is because I've started a new job and I'm not going to be able to do as many videos as I was doing before. Uh, you may have noticed that the amount of videos I was doing has fallen off a cliff. I have what was doing one every day for the last three or four months, but uh, now I'm probably only going to be able to manage one or two a week. So uh, a lot of the projects I had done before are going to scale back or just park uh, like the uh, MK single board computer, was M M68K single board computer, I'll park that. Uh, but what I am going to do is uh, a sort of a series on assembly language programming in RISC-V for sort of start to finish. Um, now, I'm not a teacher, but I do know some of this stuff, and I've taught myself some of this stuff, so we'll go through that. Um, but RISC-V uh, basically is an open standard uh, instruction set. Uh, so in instruction set architecture, or ISA, um, and it's based on the reduced instruction set computing principles. So unlike proprietary ISAs, RISC-V is available to anyone to use, uh, and it's a unique player in the uh, semiconductor industry. Uh, now, the development of RISC-V began in 2010 at the University of California, Berkeley, um, and the project was initiated to address the limitations posed by the proprietary ISAs, and it aimed to foster innovation and collaboration in the computer architecture research and industry. Now, as an open standard, it significantly lowered the barrier of entry for designing custom processors, and this openness has spurred innovation in a number of sectors, including uh, the Internet of Things, data centers, and even some supercomputing. Uh, it's enabled startups and established companies to experiment and develop custom solutions without licensing costs and restrictions associated with proprietary ISAs. Um, its modular design allows for a high degree of customization, so companies can select only the components they need for their specific applications. Uh, and this leads to more efficient and optimized processors. And this flexibility is particularly appealing in emerging and evolving markets where tailored solutions give you a, a competitive edge. Now, the RISC-V ecosystem has seen a rapid growth with global adoption by companies like uh, Western Digital, NVIDIA, Alibaba, etc. Uh, its openness has led to a vibrant community of developers that are constantly contributing to the development and growth of the tools, including software and hardware implementations. Uh, it, the establishment of the RISC-V Foundation, which is now the RISC-V International, uh, has further accelerated its adoption and standardization. So um, RISC-V poses a significant challenge to the established proprietary ISAs like the x86 by Intel or ARM processors, and it isn't likely to replace these architectures in their core markets anytime soon, but its growth represents a shift toward a more open and collaborative development uh, in the semiconductor industry. And its, its impact is particularly notable in sort of specific niche and, and new markets where flexibility and customization are, are critical. Now, it's also become a favorite tool in academia for teaching computer architecture. Its simplicity and openness allows students to explore the design and functionality of a modern processor without the complexities and restrictions of proprietary architectures. And it has the potential to inspire a whole new generation of computer scientists and engineers uh, with a deeper understanding of hardware. So uh, risk v development and adoption illustrate a significant shift in the computer uh, semiconductor industry toward openness and collaboration. And its impact extends beyond the technical advantage uh, and fosters a culture of communication, innovation, and it reduces the barrier of entry. So many challenges still remain, obviously, uh, including competing with the entrenched proprietary ISAs. Um, but the RISC-V trajectory suggests a promising role in shaping the future of computing. Now, I have recently purchased this, which is a demo board for um, uh, a RISC-V 
processor, but stupidly I did not purchase the serial link that you need to program this thing and I, the, a regular serial link won't do the job. Um, but I hope to bring some RISC-V processing on these sort of um, chips in the not too distant future. Uh, but this series, I do want to start to cover some things like the initial thing I want to set up in the next video is how to set up a development environment uh, so that you can start doing some RISC-V assembly language programming. So I'll cover how to uh, install a virtual machine using uh, QEMU, uh, which is a RISC-V Linux machine. Uh, and the tool chain that you need, you know, GCC, GDB, and all of the tools that you need to build these um, RISC-V programs. Uh, and then I'll cover the basics of assembly language, uh, the instruction set architecture, the number, the registers, uh, arithmetic and logic instructions, flow control, memory management, uh, some basic program writing. And then possibly if we, if we get a chance, we move to more sort of advanced programming concepts, uh, interrupt handling, um, interfacing with peripherals, um, bit banging, uh, SPI interfaces, etc. cetera. So um, that's the plan I have for the, for the series. And hopefully I'll be able to do um, at least one of those a week. Um, so that's the plan for the series uh, going forward. Uh, if you like these sort of videos, please like and subscribe and all of that YouTube jazz. And I will see you next week.